If you're watching this video, you are a modern web participant. However, the web we are experiencing today is much different than it was just 10 years ago. How has the web evolved? And more importantly, where is it going next? If history has taught us anything, these changes will probably be quite significant. Think about how the internet affects your daily life. Consider how society has changed as a result of the internet. Social media platforms, mobile apps, and now the internet is going through another paradigm shift as we speak. The web has evolved a lot over the years, and its applications today are almost unrecognizable from its early days. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be exploring what Web3 is, why it matters, and how it will affect you. Okay, so I have widely heard this term, Web3, but what is it? Web3 is the name some technologists have given to the idea of a new kind of internet service built using decentralized blockchains, the shared ledger systems used by cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ether. Web3, also known as Web3.0, is an idea for a new iteration of the World Wide Web which incorporates concepts such as decentralization, blockchain technologies, and token-based economics. In Web3, developers don't usually build and deploy applications that run on a single server or that store their data in a single database, usually hosted on and managed by a single cloud provider. Instead, Web3 applications run on blockchains, or a combination of the two forms a crypto economic protocol. These apps are often referred to as dApps, decentralized apps, and you will see that term used often in the Web3 space. To achieve a stable and secure decentralized network, Network participants or developers are incentivized and compete to provide the highest quality services to anyone using the service. When you hear about Web3, you'll notice that cryptocurrency is often part of the conversation. This is because cryptocurrency plays a big role in many of these protocols. It provides a financial incentive, tokens, for anyone who wants to participate in creating, governing, contributing to, or improving one of the projects themselves. These protocols may even offer computing, storage, bandwidth, identity, hosting, or other web services commonly provided by cloud providers. Consumers of the service usually pay to use the protocol, similar to how they would pay a cloud provider like AWS today. Except in Web3, the money goes directly to the network participants. In this, like many forms of decentralization, you'll see those unnecessary and often inefficient intermediaries cut out. Many web infrastructure protocols like Filecoin, Livepeer, Arweave, and The Graph, which I work with at Edge and Node, have issued utility tokens that govern how the protocol functions. Tokens also reward participants at many levels of the network. Even native blockchain protocols like Ethereum operate in this manner. Native payments. Tokens also introduce a native payment layer that is completely borderless and frictionless. Companies like Stripe and PayPal have created billions of dollars by enabling electronic payments. These systems are overly complex and do not enable true international interoperability between participants. They also require you to hand over your sensitive information and personal data to use them. Crypto wallets like MetaMask and Taurus enable you to integrate easy, anonymous, and secure international payments and transactions into Web3 applications. A new way of building companies. Tokens also bring about the idea of tokenization and the realization of a token economy. Take, for example, the current state of building a software company. Someone comes up with an idea, but to start building, they need money to support themselves. They take on venture capital to get the money and give away a percentage of the company. This investment immediately introduces misaligned incentives that will, in the long run, not align well with building out the best user experience. How Identity Works in Web3 In Web3, identity also works much differently than we are today. Most of the time in Web3 apps, identities will be tied to the wallet address of the user interacting with the application. If the user chooses to use the same wallet across multiple dApps, their identity is seamlessly transferable across apps, which lets them build up their reputation over time. Protocols and tools like Ceramic and IDX allow developers to build self-sovereign identity into their applications to replace traditional authentication and identity layers. Core Ideas of Web3 Although it's challenging to provide a rigid definition of what Web3 is, a few core principles guide its creation. Web3 is decentralized. Instead of large swaths of the internet controlled and owned by centralized entities, ownership gets distributed amongst its builders and users. Web3 is permissionless. Everyone has equal access to participate in Web3 and no one gets excluded. Web3 is trustless. 
It operates using incentives and economic mechanisms instead of relying on trusted third parties. Why is Web3 important? Although Web3's killer features aren't isolated and don't fit into neat categories, for simplicity, we've tried to separate them and make them easier to understand. Ownership. Web3 gives you ownership of your digital assets in an unprecedented way. For example, say you're playing a Web2 game. Web3 allows for direct ownership through non-fungible tokens, NFTs. No one, not even the game's creators, have the power to take away your ownership. Censorship resistance. The power dynamic between platforms and content creators is massively imbalanced. On Web3, your data lives on the blockchain. When you decide to leave a platform, you can take your reputation with you, plugging it into another interface that more clearly aligns with your values. Decentralized Autonomous Organizations, DAOs. As well as owning your data in Web3, you can own the platform as collective, using tokens that act like shares in a company. DAOs let you coordinate decentralized platform ownership and make decisions about its future. Identity. Web3 solves many problems by allowing you to control your digital identity with an Ethereum address and ENS profile. Using an Ethereum address provides a single login across secure, censorship-resistant, and anonymous platforms. That sounds terrifying. Wasn't there a Black Mirror episode about this? Yes, there was. And the permanence of Web3, along with its dependence on volatile crypto markets, is a part of the reason the grander Web3 vision has been met with so much resistance. For example, the writer and technologist Robin Sloan wrote that the ability to delete things, an operation basically antithetical to Web3, in his words, was actually a desirable quality of internet services. Well, now we're venturing deep into the land of the theoretical, but some believers think that Web3 could become the backbone of a new tokenized society. Web3 will house our financial institutions, social interactions, personal identities, and much, much more in the not-so-distant future, Lior Masika, a crypto investor, told TechCrunch recently. Web3 enhances the internet as we know it today with a few other added characteristics. Web3 is verifiable, trustless, self-governing, permissionless, distributed and robust, stateful, native, built-in payments. That concludes today's video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and share this channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.